Thank you very much, Wendy. Um, so from the outset, I want to uh, just lay a few ground rules down for the presentation. Um, just want to be clear, I'm not an expert. I'm not, you know, certainly the only expert um, in this area. So this is based on my personal experience. Um, and I want to have an honest dialogue about what went well and what didn't go well. So many webinars you see, um, things are an incredible success, and, and we talk about all the good things that happened. In this presentation, I really wanted to cover everything and really take a balanced approach with, you know, both the things that we did really well as well as the things that we did um, really poorly. And then we're going to have a bunch of time for questions at the end. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll kick it off. So um, we began a, uh, a global program. Uh, we implemented our first phase in September of 2014. Um, and one of the challenges is I think we're sort of a victim of our own success. Um, so we had completed an SAP implementation. Um, it was fairly complex. Uh, we had 14 different SAP components um, as part of that go-live. We were actually six full months ahead of schedule and um, had an eight-figure cost savings. Um, so at that point, I would say we were really on top of the world. So we had delivered, you know, under budget, um, way ahead of time. Um, and one of the best pieces of information with that is we really um, had no defects um, after go live of, of a major significance. So, um, so we were expecting, you know, we, we knew we were ahead of schedule, we knew we were under budget, and we, you know, we weren't sure when, once we went live what our experience would be. Um, we had done a lot of testing that was very successful, but we weren't sure, you know, when reality hit what it would look like. And the good news is there really weren't any bumps in the road after we went live. Um, I think we felt really good about what we had done because um, although we had implemented in North America, we had done a global design. Um, and so we, we knew um, that the people that would be involved in subsequent phases were already involved in the first phase. Um, so we didn't anticipate, you know, having to do any major redesigns um, of what we had implemented in the first phase in that second phase, but rather we would just be bringing that program um, internationally. So I, I think, you know, it's fair to say we felt a little bit overconfident um, in our ability to deliver at that point. So I'll go to the next slide. So with all that being said, um, there were some clouds visible on the horizon. So, it, you know, we had a, a great success, but we could see some things sort of looming. Um, one of the biggest pieces was that we were no longer a greenfield implementation. So at the first phase, we didn't have an SAP environment. Um, that we were, you know, currently supporting and moving into. So we sort of had the luxury of we're going to get it right the first time. In fact, we were actually able to use uh, what became the production environment for our testing. The day we went live, all that changed. Um, so we had a production environment to maintain. We had uh, what we termed maintenance releases of, of scheduled improvements for that. Um, speaking of that, we had a significant backlog. Um, of items to work through post go live. So the commitment we made to our business partners was we would hold the line on scope uh, with the first phase of the program because we thought sort of the perfect would be the enemy of the good. Um, and so we made sure we delivered the core functionality that was needed, a few of the bells and whistles. Um, but as we were looking towards going live, the question that we sort of always asked was, is this one change worth delaying our, our go live day for? Um, and in, I think every case we found the answer was no. But with that, our commitment was that we would take those things, put them on a list, and then we would implement that backlog after Go Live. Um, and so there was a significant list um, at Go Live. We added to it. There were several hundred scope items, um, mainly minor things, but some important pieces of reporting functionality were included with that. So we knew we had a chunk of work just to sort of complete, really complete um, that first phase even though we were technically live. Um, another thing that we had done um, to minimize risk was we hadn't upgraded um, our software stack in about two years. Um, so this was everything from our, our servers and, and the operating systems that they were running on um, through to all the different SAP components. Um, so with that, we knew that we were running a significant technology and security risk um, by being on sort of older, um, older software. Um, one of the other factors uh, was we had worked really hard on our, our initial phase, and I think it was fair to say everyone on the team uh, was fairly burnt out. So 
you know, average hours across the team were probably somewhere in the 60 to 80 range um, throughout the course of that program. So even though it was two and a half years only, it felt like longer. Um, and then many people on the team had sort of ramped up at key points um, and were working more in the 80 to 100 hour week um, range for a consistent amount of time. So with that, you definitely have to be conscious of, of burnout. Um, and I would say, you know, across the program, we were certainly there. Um, I think the other challenge is we had built so much um, into going live and that experience. Um, and so everything after that was a bit of a letdown. So it, it's like, you know, you, it's like, you know, a sports team winning a championship. There's a, you know, feeling of elation. You've accomplished what you what you set out to do. And then you sort of, you know, after that, you know, the, the, the parade's over, the confetti's all on the floor, you're cleaning it up, and then you're like, okay, what next? Um, and I think we suffered from a bit of that, um, where we had done everything we had hoped to accomplish, um, had been successful beyond sort of our wildest expectations, and then it was like, okay, and, and how, do we, how do we top that um, in the next phase? And so I think that was one of the challenges um, that we were looking at as well. So with that, um, I think we're, we're probably supremely overconfident going into the, the second phase of the project. Um, and so we plan to execute um, primarily in Europe, but manage the program almost exclusively from North America. Um, so we had some managers on the ground in Europe, um, but thought that we could you know, manage the program really well from, from North America. Um, key leaders would visit, you know, maybe once every two months just to make sure things were going as planned, um, and that was about it. Um, as you'll see a little bit later, that, that wasn't, uh, wasn't the reality that we experienced. Um, so we were very confident in our ability to, to roll out globally, um, and we weren't concerned um, about the time zone differences between um, Europe and the U.S., and then we also had um, a large component in Australia um, in the mix as well. Um, and I think after that first phase, one of the things we sort of forgot what made us successful. So in that first phase of our program, when we delivered in North America, one of the things that we did really well was we managed risks. Um, we were very aggressive in both identifying risks. We carved out a significant amount of time to both, you know, talk about the risks as well as mitigate them. And so I think we grew a little complacent. We figured, you know, oh, we're, we're pretty good with risk. We understand what we're doing. Um, you know, and, and so we sort of dialed it back a little bit. Um, and I think that that was part of our, our overconfidence is we, you know, we faced really huge, enormous risks in the first um, phase of the program, had done well with them. And so I think every other risk, you know, didn't seem that big. Um, and so we forget that those risks, you know, could turn into issues and, and could bite us in the end. Another key thing in hindsight, um, we lost critical momentum. So you see the picture of the, the cart that's completely stuck in the mud. Um, you know, once you're moving, things work well. Once you stop, it's really tough um, to overcome that inertia and get moving again. Um, all of our energy had been focused on the first phase. And so when we made the decision to deliver early and implement six months ahead of schedule, Part of, part of that conversation was we were going to focus on that release exclusively. And so in the original program plan, we had, you know, the, the beginnings of that second phase of the program were going to start, you know, a few months before the, the go live of the first phase. And we said, you know what, we'll go live, and then we'll worry about planning the next phase of the program. Um, with that, one of the challenges that we had was we lost valuable team members. Um, so we had, as, as I outlined in the slide here, we had a maintenance um, release almost immediately after go live. So it was delivered two months after go live. So as you can imagine, you know, we were working on that furiously through the go live, just after the go live, um, and then implemented that maintenance release. It included key reporting functionality um, for us, which wasn't available at go live, but needed to be available for the year end time frame. Um, so we delivered that. But our second phase didn't kick off until about six months after go live. Um, so with that gap, we had many key consultants who couldn't afford to sit, you know, we couldn't afford to keep them on.